Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to study the different methods which are used to find out the average rainfall data. So let's start. So in an area when the rainfall is occurring, so we need to calculate the mean rainfall so that we can estimate the trend in that particular area because the rainfall intensity that will be varying in a region. So to evaluate that mean rainfall, we are having different methods. In that, the first method that we are going to discuss is known as the arithmetic mean method. Now that means it is a simple average method which is used to calculate the mean rainfall. Now this method is suitable when the rainfall distribution that is uniform throughout the area. For example, let's consider that this is an area which is under consideration. Now in this area, we are having different rain gauge stations. That means these are the points where we are measuring the readings of the rainfall. So if let's say we are having four rain gauge stations, so we are assuming that the rainfall is uniform throughout this area. That means across all of these rain gauge stations, the rainfall intensity and the depth that will be the same because if 4 cm of the rainfall is falling over 4th station then on 2nd station also it will be having 4 cm P1 is also having 4 cm and P3 is also having 4 cm per hour rainfall. That means the rainfall distribution is uniform. So in that we measure the magnitude of the rainfall on each station that is P1, P2, P3 and we then simply add up all of them and divide it by the number of rain gauge stations at which we are measuring the rainfall. So that is basically the average method which is known as the arithmetic mean method. This is the simplest method but that does not give the accurate results because it is not possible that the rainfall distribution will be uniform throughout a particular area. This area may extend up to several of thousands of kilometers. So that's why this method does not give the accurate result because of its assumption. Moving on to the next method that is known as the Thiessen polygon mean method. Now what is this method? So in this particular method the calculation is done based upon the weighted mean concept. Now what is this weighted mean concept? So let's say this is a roughly area. This is roughly an area which is under consideration. Now in this particular area, let's say we are dividing it into three parts. This is first, this is second and this is the third part. So this first part that is having the rainfall as P1, then second one that is having P2, this third one that is having P3 rainfall. Now in this area, the A1 is representing the area of first block and A2 and A3, these are respectively the areas. Now, in the weighted mean concept, what we do, we assign the certain weights. That means, of the entire area, how much is covered by the first block. So, for that, the weight is calculated by dividing the area of that particular block by the entire area. So let's say if these three blocks are equal. So that means this A1 will be A by 3 and the total area is A. So weight assigned to the first block will be 1 by 3. So what we do in this case, the adjacent stations, they are connected by the straight lines. Now let's say we consider a triangle. These are the three stations which are present in a catchment area. Now these adjacent stations they are connected by these straight lines. Okay, just assume that these are the straight lines. Then 
dividing the entire area into a series of triangles. So within an area, these were the three rain gauge stations P1, P2 and P3. Now in the next step, the perpendicular bisectors are then drawn on these straight lines. So the perpendicular bisector, that means it will be perpendicular to it and both these sides which are bisected by this line that will be equal. Similarly for this line and similarly for the third line. So now in this case what is happening? It is forming a series of polygon around each rain gauge station. So this is the first polygon which is formed around P1 then similarly around P2 and then P3. If this irregular shape is representing the boundary then this polygon will be extended up to this level. That will be the polygon number one. So what is the condition that each polygon in this area that should contain only one rain gauge station. That is an important condition to draw this Thiessen polygon. Now based upon this geometry we calculate the average or the mean rainfall data. So how is that done? So that is P1 into A1 that is this P1 station and A1 will be the area of this polygon in which the P1 station is stationed. Similarly P2 into A2 up to Pn into An divided by the area of all these stations that will be added up. That will give us the mean rainfall or the average rainfall. That is the second method. Now in this case the assumption that we have taken in the first method that the rainfall must be uniform throughout the area. That is not required because in this case if the rainfall is different across the rain gauge stations then that has been accounted in the weights assigned to a particular rain gauge. So that means the limitations of the first methods has been rectified in this. However in this case there are certain challenges also that what if the shape is very complex then how do we proceed about that. So to remove all those limitations also we move to the next method that is known as the isohytal method. So what is an isohyte? First of all we need to understand that. So let's say in an area if these are the different points which are representing that the rainfall which is falling on these area that is 10 centimeters. So if we draw a line which is connecting such points which are having the rainfall of 10 cm then such line is known as the isohyte. So isohyte is a line which is joining the points of equal magnitude of the rainfall. Now what this map will be representing? So an isohyte map that will represent the contour of equal rainfall interval. That means if the rainfall is 6 cm at this isohyte, so at the next one it will be 8. So the interval between these two isohyte that will remain the constant. So that means the equal rainfall interval and the area enclosed between the two adjacent isohyte that is measured with the help of an instrument which is known as the planimeter. Now let's say we are having the different rainfall across these isohytes. So to represent that let's say this first one that is representing P0 rainfall then the second one that is representing P1 then the next one is representing P2 rainfall and this circle that is representing P3 rainfall. The area enclosed between the boundary this is representing the catchment boundary. So let me just highlight that. So the boundary is highlighted with this yellow color. So the area between the boundary and the P0 isohyte that is A0 between P0 and P1 that is A1 between P1 and P2 that is A2 
done between P2 and P3 that is A3 and the area enclosed within this P3 rainfall circle that is A4. So how do we measure the average rainfall? So between P0 and P1, between P0 and P1 we will take the average value. So that is written as P average 1 which is, is equal to P0 plus P1 by 2. Similarly, between this P1 and P2 rainfall, we will be having P average 2, that is P1 plus P2 by 2. And similarly, between P2 and P3, that is the P average 3, that is P2 plus P3 by 2. Now, to calculate this mean rainfall, there is only one change, that is in place of the actual rainfall of the station, we take these average rainfall between the different ISO heights. So to calculate this mean rainfall, we will be multiplying P0 into A0, that is the area between the catchment boundary and this P0. Because in this case, what will happen? This is the actual area. So in that area, there is only one rainfall that is of P0. There is no other boundary. That's why this is P0 into A0 plus plus P average 1 into A1 plus P average 2 into A2 up to the nth station divided by the sum of all the areas. Now this will represent the mean rainfall that we are getting. Now the area between two adjacent ISO heights that is considered to receive the mean rainfall which is represented by the concerned ISO height. That means if the concerned ISO heights are P0 and P1 and the area in between them that is assumed to receive the rainfall that is the average of these two values. Now this method is superior to other two methods that means the superior to the arithmetic mean method as well as to the Thiessen polygon method. And that is specially when the rain gauge stations are more. In that case, the arithmetic mean method that will require the rainfall distribution to be uniform, while the Thiessen polygon method that will require the different geometry that would be a complex one. That's why that is avoided. Now, if any ISO height that goes out of the catchment boundary, as you can see in this case, this was the ISO height which was going outside the boundary. So the catchment boundary is considered to be the actual boundary. And if there is any closed contour, for example, this P3 rainfall, which is encircling around a rain gauge station, that in that case, the catchment boundary, the rainfall in that area, that is considered. So in this case, if we write the average rainfall for this particular station, so that will be P0 into A0 plus P average 1 into A1 plus P average 2 into A2 plus P average 3 into A3 plus P3 into A4 because this was the rainfall which was falling in this particular station that is D and the area encompassed was A4 divided by the area from A2 to A4, area from A0 to A4. That is how we will be writing the average rainfall for this particular isohytal map. Now that completes the discussion regarding the different methods which are used to calculate the mean rainfall. Now in the next video, we will try to solve some numericals based upon these methods. Thank you.